What's up, everybody? Welcome to Beyond the Panel, and we are reviewing Halo Lone Wolf number two. This book is exactly the kind of Halo book that we need at a time like this. One that continues to expand on the Halo lore, while at the same time proving that you can do so with the character who is not Master Chief. As I've said before, Spartan Linda 58 was the perfect choice as the star for this book when she is equal parts badass, engaging, and unique to most other Spartans in action. Giving us someone from Blue Team in general was the next best thing when this team of Spartans you don't see nearly enough of. Through the events of Halo Wolf number 2, we come to understand a lot about the time that this story takes place. Before, it was easier to sum this up to be in post-Covenant War, but now it's easier to see exactly where this takes place with the mention of names such as the Didax Hand. It's those little things that matter during a time like this. Even the continued hostility between the colonists and the mistrust uh, shared between regular people and uh, those who are supposed to protect them. This knowledge made the encounter between Spartan and Linda and these endangered humans rough. They were obviously not going to accept Linda with open arms, but it was how they received her help that grabs your attention the, um, more than anything else, especially when Spartans aren't exactly used to being treated as if they could also be the enemy. In turn, their response to Linda brought out a side of her that was actually surprising. What I continue to enjoy about Spartan 2s is that there really is only so far they will go for the sake of their mission. For them, there is a clear distinction between saving people and fighting legit threats, particularly when the target is only a scientist. It wasn't until facing a target where you could see why it is exactly that Linda was wary of being tagged along by an AI instead of her own team. No time is taken away by their conversation either, and it's also just as important to follow the way that she acts when technically under a microscope. The very way that this AI tries to control in this action is precisely what we needed to see from one of those uh from one of these books to draw a line in the sand that separates AIs you can trust and those you can't because uh there there's there, there's a there's a big difference when you have AIs such as Cortana, someone who you know is working for you and is uh is looking out for your best interests and someone who's offered to you by O and I, and uh, you don't know where that person's loyalties lies. They 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 don't look at you as their primary uh, as their primary uh, teammate or or a uh, partner. Now, uh, as far as story progression goes for this for this second issue, it was good to get some clarity towards why it is that the Covenant are on this planet and coming after the humans settled here. Even better, that we could begin piecing together why it is that Chen is on this planet and still there. He's clearly up to something, and that challenges this mission for Linda, since it takes a delicate approach to both saving these people and protecting them from someone who they trust more than her. Now, normally, when I say that the artwork for a Halo book is quality, that might actually mean solid at best. Halo Lone Wolf is probably the first book in a good while where I'm able to say that uh, where I can, where I'm able to say that this is quality work and actually mean that. I was impressed by the improvements that the interior artwork even had in this issue. Big steps were taken to give us clear renderings of uh, of all the characters, the settings, the backgrounds, even Linda herself. Before, it was just the humans who were lacking because of some areas of perspective. You know, sometimes you, sometimes you pan things out too far and everything, and everything just isn't in the same uh, level of detail. They kind of they back off a little bit, and all you really see is just the shapes, the outlines, not enough that really engages you. The, but for this issue... But but for this issue, a lot of that was fixed, and that made a big difference in how this chapter engages us with Linda's handling of these settlers. The characters were much more expressive. It was great to see the Sunkili in full detail, and Linda 
in her armor again was commendable for every action scene that made her move like she was a superwoman. Like, uh, like, uh, I feel like one of the biggest aims you want to make, even whether it's the video game or the comics, you want to make her look strong. You want to make her look faster than everyone. You want to make her just look imposing. What we got out of this second issue so far makes it easier to say that this is one of the best Halo books that Dark Horse has put out. And uh, excellent story, and it has an excellent story that is only matched by quality artwork. Spartans of personality is never a bad thing, and this story right now proves that.